wonder how to get your music onto blogs or webzines, Derek has got some amazing advice on how to approach bloggers, podcasters, and webzines. All these webmasters out there and all these people with blogs and websites, they're kind of like the new editors of Rolling Stone in a way, except now, luckily, instead of one magazine called Rolling Stone, there's like a million magazines called, you know, Rolling Stone Klesmer. <laughs> um, and reach those people, because you'd be surprised, like, it's not that hard to, like, go to a, a fan site of, of Klesmer Music, and you click contact, you see who's running the site, and you send them an email, and you say, hey, you know, I'm, a, I'm really enjoying your site. I love the fact that you put it together. And in fact, I'm also a musician here in Philadelphia, and I think you would really like my music. And, you know, could I send you a copy and see what you think? That I think that would be my next baby step advice to any band is to start diving down your niches. Don't go Google searching like, you know, saying music distribution, independent sales or whatever. Put yourself into the mindset of a fan and see where that kind of discovery process takes you and then get your music to those places. Another thing to add to that is if you are looking to expand on your online footprint, as I like to call it, um, one thing to always keep in mind is most people that run independent musician, you know, reviewing music or they're running a podcast or a blog or a vlog or any of these sites, normally they're just fans. They're fans of music. They have a certain amount of knowledge around a certain type of music. Usually it's very niche down. And... They actually got into this because they want to hear from the musician. Yep. They want that connection. It's not like a busy editor at your at the New York Times or the LA Times or the Rolling Stone and they're so busy and overwhelmed. And a lot of these smaller sites don't even get pitched. A lot of these sites are run by people. They use their own record collections, their own knowledge, and they very rarely get approached by musicians. So if you can put together a letter, a little email, and flattery will get you absolutely everywhere be specific. I like this article. I like this topic. I like the color. Whatever it is you like, be really honest about it. And I think one of those emails is better than a hundred packages mailed out to random publications that might never notice your stuff. And on that note, you have to prove to them that you're not spamming. Like sometimes people will send me an email and it takes me until the third paragraph before they've actually mentioned me or CD Baby, and it's like, I'm about to hit delete because it looks like something they've sent to 100 people. I'm like, delete. It's like, oh, wait, they are actually writing to me. So make sure that you very, you know, if you're contacting these places yourself, make sure that you very specifically mention. Just like, you know, I love the fact that you did a feature about such and such a band, and I thought this was great, and that's why I think you, that you will like this. Overall, your pitch to anyone should just be an expression of your art. And remember always to put them first, because the most interesting thing to people is always them. This is Arielle Hyatt. This is Sound Advice with my special guest, Derek Sivers.